In my last video, I created a bot that can destroy Mario Party DS games using image recognition. It was a ton of fun and you guys seemed to like it too, so I decided to take on a couple more. The first one I picked was Hot Shots, a game where you have to shoot arrows to hit targets. Hitting Kamek gives 20 points, Bowser 100 and Toadette minus 30, and you have 20 seconds to hit as many of them as you can. There is a bonus though, you can start a streak if you hit targets quickly enough. The streak ends when you take too long or miss a target. So the goal is not only to hit the targets, but also to not miss any shots or fire too rapidly. While playing around a bit, I found out that you don't actually have to drag on the arrow, you can just click anywhere to fire a shot. So for the first step, I figured out the 6 XY coordinates on the touchscreen to hit all of the targets. That already massively simplified the logic and now I just needed to find out which target to shoot at any given moment. Detecting the characters was actually rather simple. For each of the targets, you can just monitor its center pixel and check the color. Bowser, Toadette and Kamek all have different colors at the center pixel, so after finding them out manually, I could just check what the current color is for each of the targets. First, figure out what characters are shown on the targets and rank them by points. Second, pick the highest value target and click on the touch screen so that an arrow gets shot at it. And finally, repeat until the end of the game. To visualize what the bot is seeing, I added a little color grid. There are six areas and the colors indicate the detected target. Red stands for Bowser, blue for Kamek, pink for Toadette and white for no detection. Let's try it out. Okay, okay, hold on. Most of my arrows aren't hitting and the streak ends. I'm firing way too fast and I guess the arrows just vanish when you click before the last one reached its target. So let's add a little timeout after firing and try again. Well, now the arrows are hitting, but it seems the detection is quite broken. When the targets flip after getting hit, the bot still sees the target every time it's exactly aligned. And when that target happens to be the highest value, the bot will try shooting at it again. To avoid that, I added a little timeout for each target after getting hit, so the bot doesn't try to shoot them again immediately. In my visualization, this timeout is shown as black. I also adjusted the timings a little bit, so that the streak is held indefinitely, at least against an easy bot. Very nice, since 9990 is the maximum score you can get. But now, let's check out the next game. I picked Domino Effect, which is a coordination game where you have to press the correct button as fast as possible. Hitting a wrong button costs you time, and if you take too long, you're out. The good part, the indicator which button you need to press is always at the same location on screen. That means, as long as I can find out which button character I'm looking at, I don't see any further complications. Now, you may think we need an OCR library to parse the shown character. And while that would be a solution, it is, again, way overkill. It's actually possible to determine the current character from just looking at certain pixels and checking their colors. Like in Hot Shots, I could have done this manually and determined which pixels and colors I need to process. But like any good software engineer who has to do anything more than once, I wrote a program to automate this literal 3 minute task for me. The program works as follows. First, I give it a list of images I want to check. It then returns all the pixels and one set of RGB values for each of the images to identify it. Using these values, I can determine exactly which image I'm looking at by simply reading a single pixel. Now I can plug these values into the code of the bot. I'm capturing the region of the screen that shows the button and check the pixel I found earlier to find out which one is shown. Then I can just use the information to execute a button press. Let's see how it goes. We can see the detection is already working quite well, but the program is running too quickly, so it makes some mistakes. 
After fiddling around a bit with a timeout after each button press, I finally ended up with this solution. And I'm pretty happy with the result. But before we move on to the next game, I'd like to ask you guys to send this video to your girlfriends. Seriously, zero women watched? Come on, let's work together to get one female viewer. Anyway, let's carry on. The last game I picked is an easy one. You only need to mash A as often as possible in the first 10 seconds of the game, and the more often you pressed it, the further the lead gets pushed out. Now, before you click off the video because we don't need any fancy computer vision tricks to beat this, finding a good mashing interval is still a relatively interesting problem to solve. The thing is, if you mash too fast, your hits aren't registered, but go too slowly and you don't get optimal points. To find out the best possible value, I used a search algorithm called ternary search. It may sound complicated, but actually you are just checking the values at certain intervals and narrowing in on the optimal solution. For completeness sake, I'm assuming the underlying scoring function is unimodal in the region we are looking at, meaning there's a single peak where the best result is found. This is important, so we don't land in a local maximum, which may be far from perfect. To start the search, I first had to define an initial range of delay values between button presses. Of course the lower bound is zero delay, and for the upper limit I chose 0.1 seconds, or 100 milliseconds. The bounds are visualized with dashed black lines in the graph. I already checked these values and if we use zero delay we get zero points because none of the hits are registered. And with 100 milliseconds delay, so about 10 clicks per second, we get a measly 15 points. The maximum is somewhere in between those two points. I added a blue point to conceptualize the current best guess, but keep in mind that it is not really part of the process and just for visualization. To start the search, we probe the points at one third of the range and also at two thirds, as shown here by the dotted grey lines. Probing here just means we set the delay in the bot code, run the game and note down the points achieved. The first probe returned 44 points and the second one just 22. After adding these values to the graph, you can see that the maximum exists between the left bound and the two thirds marker. It cannot be in the last third because we assume the scoring function is unimodal, so it cannot increase again after decreasing from the one third point on. The next step is to update the boundaries. Since we know it can't be in the last third, we shift the right boundary to the last probe point. From that point on, we repeat the process. Determine the values at one third and two thirds to probe, run the bot to get the point values and then update the bounds. Note that for the first few steps, only the right boundary shifts, but that isn't always the case. This can continue until a stopping condition is met, for example if a certain amount of iterations is reached or the improvement from one step to another is below a chosen threshold. I stopped after 10 iterations, because I was getting close to the theoretical maximum of 90 cm, which apparently you can only achieve via pause buffering in a task setting. The final value lands suspiciously close to the frame time that Mario Party is running at, and it makes sense that pressing the button once per frame should theoretically yield optimal results. But seeing the search algorithm converge near that point is satisfying nonetheless, especially since we are running this on a real system where minor delays and hardware timing quirks likely explain why we settle at 15.9 milliseconds instead of the exact 16.67 milliseconds. Anyway, here's the final result. I don't think you can do much better with an external tool, so I'll leave it at that. And that's it for now. If you want to see more games being automated in the future, let me know in the comments, I'll read them all. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss it. See you guys in the next one.